in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed we have to do this fast. The Spirit of God wants to bring so much within the time that we have. And um, praise the name of the Lord. So I set the stage for my dear friend and brother, Pastor Jerry, to also have the opportunity to share. Could you help me on the sound? Thank you. Hallelujah. Please help me honor Pastor Larry. God bless you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Um, we do the things that we do because we love Jesus. And then we love people. Hallelujah. Amen. It's an honor to spend and be spent for Jesus. This is why he's granted the grace. And so truly, I consider it an honor to be here. Hallelujah. And then please, please do help me. It was a pleasant surprise seeing him also. Reverend Edwin, all the way from House on the Rock, Enugu, give him a big God bless you. Is this how you honor Reverend? Amen. Let's pray. Father, we ask that you reveal your word to us tonight. In the name of Jesus. Let your word come with power. Grant us understanding that after tonight, we truly will begin to walk in power and walk in authority. Tonight, we declare that there is the hearing of faith and even the walking of miracles. And to Jesus be all the glory. Amen and amen. I saw so many people outside. I was so humbled. Those in the, I don't know which of the overflows. That's them shouting blessings to you please be seated amen the psalmist said i was glad when they said unto me let us go to the house of the lord there are things you only find in the house of the lord you cannot find it in a bank you cannot find it in a school among the many things that the church does is that it is the cheapest institution for transformation all other institutions have very strict requirements like age range regional quotas but all it takes to be changed by god through the church is your availability there are no age restrictions no gender biases no pre-qualifications all that is required is your hunger and your presence hallelujah and so i want us to pay attention as i set the stage for the mighty things that god is going to be doing tonight i'm teaching on authority power and jurisdiction authority power and jurisdiction it's going to be a brief charge and then we'll pray authority power and jurisdiction Please lend me your attention. The average Christian's understanding about power and authority is vague and largely inaccurate. Just listen for a minute and then we'll continue. The average Christian's understanding as far as the subject of authority and power is concerned is largely vague and inaccurate. Most believers know instinctively or perhaps by reason of being in church that the believer has been given power the believer has been given authority but in truth most believers are at a loss as to what that even means hallelujah it is true 
from scripture that we have been given power and that we have been given authority jesus himself made very profound statements attesting to the fact that the believer in christ has an advantage of power an advantage of authority are we together but then having that information is not enough for us to walk in the experience of power it will take going beyond just the awareness that we have been given power to actually walk in power so i to set the stage tonight my first assignment is to redefine certain terminologies because we need to be on the same page as to the idea of power and authority are you ready let's define power what exactly is power as far as the business of the kingdom is concerned here are my definitions number one power is the capacity to influence outcomes power is the capacity to influence outcomes whoever sustains the capacity to influence outcomes has power the capacity to influence outcomes number two still defining power the force that compels compliance this is my definition of power the force that compels compliance hallelujah are we together in physics the first law of mechanics as postulated by sir isaac newton says that everybody remains in its uniform motion or state of rest except compelled by an external force to act otherwise am i right on that that means if i keep this and i leave it here theoretically it should remain in this state if it does shift then a force greater than what is keeping it must have been exerted so power is defined as the force that compels compliance capacity to influence outcomes and the force that compels compliance is my definition of power you have that down let's define authority this will be very in authority means the right to represent number one the right to represent the right to represent number two authority is the legitimacy to use power authority is defined as the legitimacy to use power so while power talks of capacity to influence outcomes authority is the legitimacy to use power if you have power and you do not have authority you have a right the government can arrest you for instance what is the difference between an armed robber holding a gun and a military man holding a gun both of them have power but only one has authority are we learning already so authority is the right to use power before the realm of the spirit respects your use of power it must verify that you have authority there are many people who have authority but they do not have power are we learning already now authority always comes with a predefined jurisdiction please let me have your attention it is impossible to give someone the legitimacy to use power indefinitely every time you grant authority you must define jurisdictions am i correct yes there is nobody who is given power without jurisdiction the strength of authority is that it is it is you you walk the authority within a predefined jurisdiction are we learning already because most believers are only power conscious and they do not know that there is a jurisdiction to the use of the believers power we do not have power everywhere for instance the throne room there is a limit the believer does not have indefinite absolute power the power and the authority that we have has jurisdictions are we learning now let's now define jurisdiction remember we're doing i'm being very elementary we're just doing definitions 
so we've defined power authority now jurisdiction jurisdiction is the sphere where the use of power is allowed beyond which it becomes illegal jurisdiction please put that down represents the sphere where the use of power is allowed jurisdiction represents the sphere where the use of power is allowed beyond which it becomes illegal so as much as a military man has authority his authority is defined by a code of conduct am i right on that and there are jurisdictions he cannot walk into your house for no cause and no reason and just shoot you down so there has to be jurisdiction are we together now let me go straight to the point there are a few things that we need to understand as far as the administration of power is concerned number one man does not have absolute power no man was never given absolute power only god has absolute power listen carefully the power that man has is derived and is limited that is the reason why power can increase and power can reduce god does not increase power he does not reduce power because he has absolute power you need to understand this these are the fundamentals of administering true spiritual power man was not given absolute power only god has absolute power and in fact is the exclusive owner of all power god does not just have absolute power based on scripture he is the exclusive owner let's look at two scriptures first chronicles 29 11 is god helping someone already first chronicles 29 and 11 the bible says yours O lord is the greatness and the power and the glory the victory and the majesty for all that is in heaven and in earth is yours yours is the kingdom O lord and you are exalted above all scripture number two second chronicles chapter 20 from verse 5 and 6 this was a prayer that jehoshaphat was praying then jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of judah and jerusalem in the house of the lord before the new court verse 6 and he said "O lord god of our fathers are you not god in the heavens and do you not rule over all the kingdoms of the earth and in your hand is there not power and might so that there is none that is able to withstand you only god god almighty has absolute power are we learning already if you're with me shout a loud amen. amen all right are you ready for the next surprise god almighty does not have authority god cannot have authority the nature of authority is that someone higher than you must confide upon you listen carefully god does not have authority the law of authority is that you must be under authority to have authority the centurion said for i am a man under authority and then i also have other people under me on the strength of that law i say to one go and he goeth if god has authority there must be someone he must be obedient to and he, there must be someone he must worship there are certain things god cannot do for instance he cannot be obedient it is not in his character who will he obey are you learning now because there are many believers who want the realm of the spirit to respect them and with this maze of misinformation and confusion we speak to demons and we hope that they listen we speak to situations and circumstances no the power of god is administered upon the strength of knowledge god does not have authority he only gives authority are we learning 
God Almighty does not have authority. Ladies and gentlemen, he only gives authority. The law of authority, I, I, I told you earlier on, is that there must be someone higher than you who gives you that authority and supervises your compliance. Every time you give authority to someone lower than you, automatically you have the power to supervise their compliance. If they default, you withdraw it. Hallelujah. Isaiah 40, my goodness. Now you will worship him with understanding. The one who only has power with no authority. Isaiah 40, 14. Isaiah 40, 14. With whom did he take counsel? And who instructed him? Who taught him in the path of justice? Who taught him knowledge? And who showed him the way of understanding? There is no one. This is how great God is. That he does not have the ability to obey. And he does not have the ability to have authority. It cannot be. He searched for a man greater than him. He was willing to humble himself to such a God if there were any. And not finding any, he swore by himself. That by this two immutable counsel, it is impossible for God to lie. Do you know what that means? If God says I will bless you, there is no other force that threatens that word. Listen, let me teach you something about authority. In the court, we have customary court. We have high court. Am I right on that? And they all have jurisdictions. Have you seen that there are certain courts that cannot pass certain, uh, what do we call it now? Talk to me lawyers. They can't pass certain judgments because they say it is beyond their jurisdiction. They have authority but it must be supervised the highest of them in any nation is called the supreme court am i right on that and when the supreme court makes a statement whether you agree or not as far as that jurisdiction is concerned it is over hmm. so i can say i want to bless you but if someone higher than me perhaps the one who gave me the legitimacy to use that power refuses i become helpless even though i am sincere so when God speaks, what makes his word powerful is not just that he is God, it's because he's the only one. Are we learning now? Can we pray in the spirit for one minute? We are redefining things. For someone, God is already giving you understanding. Hallelujah. Are we together now? So let's recap on everything we've said. We define power. We define authority. We define jurisdiction. And now we're establishing a few things that will guide our understanding. That man does not have absolute power. Only God has absolute power and is the exclusive owner. He was not given. He is the owner. I have spoken once and twice have you heard that power. That includes the power that is used by witchcraft and all of that. <laughs> you just listen. God operates the power of god operates at three levels i don't have the time the highest dimension of his power is derived through intimacy are we together you will have to encounter god directly by his spirit to have that dimension of power the second level of god's power is hidden in principles you don't need a relationship to activate that dimension you only need knowledge so you can reject god as a person and refuse intimacy with him but understand the principles are we together now it was designed to be activated the moment the laws are adhered to regardless of relationships that is the dimension where demonic forces and they only manipulate the laws of the spirit there is already a default manifestation of power it is an abuse of power. The third dimension of power happens through covenant alignment. You don't have to be powerful. You just need to believe and connect to the one who has power. 
Are we together? Are we learning now? So if you ever see whether it is the power used in occultism, whether it's the power used in any, provided you see anything that can tame creation, it is power. It belongs to God, even though it was abused. If someone steals your money and drinks with it, you are not a drunkard. It's your money, but it was abused. But it does not stop the fact that it was your money that was stolen. Am I right on that? Yes. So just because it is God's power being abused does not mean it is not his power. It is his power. It is only that it's been abused. Because one day he will withdraw it. If it was not his power, he would not have the right to withdraw it. Is it not in your Bible that Satan, hell, the grave, all will be cast into the lake of fire? Who then withdraws their power? Even the Spirit said, have you come to destroy us before our time? They are aware that there's one, the owner, the earth is the Lord's. The fullness, that means everything that finds itself in the earth belongs to him. The walls and then they, it didn't say the men that dwell there. Whoever is in the earth is still God's property. And one day he will show his absolute owner. Are we learning? I assume that your quietness means you are learning. <laughs> it's amazing how believers want to walk in power but remain in ignorance. Just learning already that God does not have authority gives it builds your faith nobody confess it upon him so when god speaks that's like the supreme court saying done every other court has to bow that is the power in his word if there were many gods and he was just the greatest there will be trouble if there were many gods equal to him and he's just the wisest out of them there will be trouble but there is none in his class are we together every once in a while we had kings upon the earth who made themselves gods we had all kinds of demons who deceived people that they were god and usually it is god's system that all through history a time will come where he will shout from heaven and remind people for instance nebuchadnezzar when he turns him to become an animal still with the brain of a man it is to make a statement that there is a god that rules over the affairs of men i'm saying that because everything god has said to you that you are wondering will it come to pass that means you are saying there is a power higher than him that may stop it no the moment you believe that god's word does not come to pass i personally consider it sin against god you are saying he lied that he does not possess authority let god be true and all men liars now to walk in dominion you must have both power and authority now you understand what i'm saying that to walk in dominion the force to create that compliance whether economic power in this case spiritual power you must do you know that the money in your pocket is nigeria's property hello you've forgotten let me remind you that the money in your pocket and the one in your bank provided you are holding paper it is written there it does not belong to you you are using it but it is nigeria's property amazing how this thing works the land that you are building on you bought it but in truth based on an agreement you are not even aware of because you were too happy to read and you just signed it it says after 99 years they hope that you'll be dead by then the devil is a liar you will live long say amen, amen. shout a louder amen, amen. Yeah. <laughs> so to walk in dominion you must need power and authority luke 10 19 you will understand that statement now luke chapter 10 and verse 19 my spiritual life changed when i understood the things that i'm sharing with you and believe me when it comes to this subject of power i know something a bit about it may not know everything but there are a few things we know hallelujah the bible says behold i give you now even new king james does not get it right the only version that really gets what jesus said is amplified give us amplified 
King James says power. New King James says authority. I respect them, but both of them are wrong. This is what Jesus said. Behold, I have given you authority and power to trample upon serpents and scorpions. Do you notice that the moment he mentioned authority, jurisdiction came. He defined what you are to have authority over. This is a law that was respected right from Genesis 1.28. The moment God gives men authority, let them have dominion. He did not stop there. Over. And he defined everything you should have dominion over. Behold, I give you authority. And I give you power. Are we together? And he says on account of that nothing, when you understand that you have authority and you have power, nothing shall by any means hurt you. This is profound. So we know from scripture that man has been given power and with power he's been given authority. Do you know why authority is important? Because there is a God, God in heaven higher than you, who supervises your administration of that power and supervises the obedience of creation while you administer that power. So if I tell one go and it does not go, it is not my responsibility to defend that statement. The power was received. The authority was conferred. The owner of the power and the one who gave me the authority will have to defend his name as touching that disobedience. When you understand this, your ego gets out of the way because it is God's business to bring confirmation. Are we learning now? Otherwise, how will you ever stand before a dead body and ask it to come back to life? Have you ever stood before a dead body that did not move? Honestly, that's when you will know that God was wise to say, get out of the way and allow me the, to be the one who confirms the word. There are cases that when you see, humanly speaking, health issues, economic situations, using the lens of a man, you would not even want to dare those things because you will be embarrassing yourself and creating a negative memorial forever. People will remember you and say, no, this person, you are as powerless as whatever. But what gives you the audacity is that I have power, I have authority, and there is one who stands behind me as a mighty, terrible one authority hallelujah what were we given authority over let me talk a bit about jurisdiction and then we'll pray genesis 1 28 you need to study the jurisdiction for the administration of your power the power god has given you and god blessed them and said be fruitful multiply fill the earth and subdue it it says have dominion over number one the fish of the sea it doesn't mean fish no it's, it's a way of showing realms so it uses whatever creature that represents that realm when it says the fish of the sea it does not mean fish are we together it means that domain then he talks of the birds of the air the air he talks of every living thing that moves upon the earth. We are given that jurisdiction. Satan is called the prince of the power of the air. He's not talking about this air. It's a spiritual location. Are we together now? This is very important. Number two. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 1. What is the believer given power over? Authority over? Let's examine from scripture. And when he had called the 12 disciples to him, he gave them power over, help me, unclean spirits. You don't have power over every spirit. No. You don't have power over, verify the spirit is unclean first. So that you stop commanding things anyhow and then you are embarrassed. You are not given power over the spirits of men. It's called manipulation. Because the spirits of men, especially men in Christ, are also holy spirits. It's just that the Holy Spirit is the most Holy Spirit. <laughs> Are you learning now? We are defining jurisdiction. You see that sincere believers make mistakes. And sometimes we command the Holy Spirit. We command all, And sometimes God just moves because he knows our ignorance versus our sincerity of heart. But it doesn't mean that what we are doing and saying is right. No, you are given power over 
before you act you want that spirit to obey you verify it is unclean what it what makes it unclean it's rebellion against the laws of god are we together yeah do you know why you cannot call a human spirit unclean even if the man is not saved because he has an opportunity to be saved demons don't so it's been verified that they are unclean spirits there is no possibility of salvation for them but for a man who may be Saul today he can be Paul tomorrow so even in that state the blood still advocates even until he steps into the experience of salvation I wish I had time this is I promise you a charge I promise you a charge I'm, I'm, I'm creating the stage for Pastor Jerry to come and then bless you I think if I do this I've, I've done well tonight I would have helped someone with his understanding are we together oh let God arise and let my enemies be scattered no he never said your enemies he said his enemies hold on do you know what it means to be God's enemy let me define God's enemy for you whoever perpetually becomes a hindrance to the manifestation of his will including you becomes his enemy whoever becomes a perpetual hindrance to the manifestation of his will so before you pray that prayer you have to examine yourself that you are not praying against yourself when the captain of the of the lord's army came to joshua is it not in your bible he said are you for us or against us and he said neither i don't walk like that whoever is accomplishing the will of god for that moment even if he's cyrus becomes my ally as far as god is concerned you will be learning i'm going ahead of myself because that's where we're going to stop <laughs> goodness we have power over creation we have power over unclean spirits are we still together number three we have power to change negative circumstances matthew 8 27 we have power to change negative circumstances negative conditions as we see in the life of jesus the Bible says this was the, the wind and remember the, 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 the storm, the boisterous storm at sea. The Bible says, so when the, then the men marveled saying, who can this be that even the winds and the sea obey him? King James says, what manner of man is this that even the winds and the waves obey him? So we have power not just over animate things as we know we also have the power to manipulate with respect to the will of God even in animate things and conditions that is the reason why I can speak to a negative condition around your life it is not a life but it can still hear because it was created the elements that form that problem were elements that God created for instance men for instance spirits are we together if a man decides to promote you the lack of promotion is a problem but it was caused by someone god created are we together now and if it becomes a hindrance to his will i'm able to declare by the spirit of god that that circumstance will change listen if you understand this your spiritual life will be so powerful because you will know how to partner with the holy spirit You'll be learning shortly that the Holy Spirit does not partner carelessly. He verifies the will of God as the basis of his partnership. If the will of God is not found in that program, the Holy Spirit will not be part of it. Wow. Could it be why many prayers are not answered? Is it not in your Bible? And this is the confidence that we have that when we ask anything according to his will, not our desires, according to his will, what is God's will? Whatever he says. God's will is whatever he says because where the power of God is, is where his voice and his word has gone to. Genesis 21 and verse 1. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said not as she wanted and the lord did unto sarah as he had spoken if he has said it and he has spoken
that becomes the assignment of power I'm going ahead of myself but we need to understand the purpose of power any kind of power the assignment of power is to bring all things to the will of God that's it so before the power of God acts it has to first verify especially if it is corrective is that current condition the will of God if not it begins to change that person or change that situation until it becomes the will of God then it stops working you also know at what point the power of God stops working when the will of God is established that means if the will of God is not yet established in your life I assure you the power of God is still working are we learning now very profound fundamental spiritual truths this is how Jesus taught the disciples to have power he did not just give them power do you know the disaster they would have become if the only thing that was from fishermen to impartation to commissioning the gospel would not cross one city he took out time this was what he was teaching them when they were now full of light then power came are we together that is the reason why when the apostles saw the damsel remember the damsel that had the spirit of divination he didn't act carelessly he had to verify whether it was the will of God or not it took time he needed to discern because he knew that the power of God does not act outside or against the will of God and when he discovered that even though her prophecy was right the spirit behind it was not of God he had the legitimate ground because we were given power over unclean spirits Is someone learning unclean spirits so if I sit down and I call for pastor's money whether he likes it or not to come to me you see that there is a problem there it is not the money is the fact that stealing does not allow I are we together rather than saying pastor's money will come to me here is what happens you call on the mystery of favor favor works with his will that is an engracing of the spirit god will make him like me are we together now and he will release it freely because in the kingdom even at the expense of your eternal destiny god does not force you to receive him there are people going to hell today in spite of the fact that they will be condemned forever god still respects their will they reject him and he says i respect you go to hell I respect you I mean go to hellfire not not go to hell as an insult are we together <laughs> us on the rock <laughs> what is the assignment of power and authority Matthew 6 and verse 10 I'm praying that someone got what I said tonight Matthew 6 and verse 10 let's read it together ready one to read thy kingdom come thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven this is why god gave us power every time you pray and fast and roll on the ground for power make sure you understand this scripture and confess it too otherwise your fasting will be a waste otherwise your praying will be a waste god does not respond to emotions and sentiments he responds to your understanding and the purity of your desire to achieve this goal so why do I come asking that God will impart more grace? Because I want to be equipped with the power and the authority that helps me to enforce his will on the earth. What is his will? I told you what he has said. What he has said. There are many things God has said. Let me give you an example. That you shall be the head and not the tail. That is a statement that the power of God has been searching for who believes and who will come into partnership with that power to make happen. If I come to you as a man of God and say in the name of Jesus, I declare you are the head. I am in the will of flow freely, unhindered to bring that word to pass. Are we together? If I pray for your loved ones to be saved and I say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we decree and declare by the anointing of the Spirit of God that these ones will go everywhere in the name of Jesus Christ. Immediately, watch this, 
immediately the power of God because it is God's will that all men be saved every time you see abuse of power is because understanding of its purpose was not established if God gives me prophetic power the ability to see now if God reveals pastor's account number for instance just as an example and then my lost can partner with that power and I can now prophesy the account and say on account of that withdraw XYZ and send to me I have abused power why was it an abuse because the will of God was not established in that program that means you can be anointed and yet your love life is not in place there is a reason why even faith works by love so even though we have the power to compromise but we constrain ourselves as proof that we love God and we administer power only within the jurisdiction of God's will listen if you know this as a man of God you will be excellent in your administering power you will see that God continues to back you up because your life and your ministry becomes so dexterous God knows that every time you show up it is to bless people every time you show up it is that his will will be done are we together now so if the sick are healed it's more than just a verification that a man is anointed it is that his will has come to pass if God gives you revelatory power as a man of God and you now use it to open people up enlighten them bring them to an understanding like I'm bringing to you now are you seeing that now once your heart is committed listen it is one of the greatest secrets i learned in my work of power with god the moment your heart becomes pegged at making the will of god to be manifest through your life you have truly entered the realm of genuine power economic power power manifesting as influence power for signs and wonders are we learning now so many many believers desire power without authority god just give me power i don't know you i don't care about you i hear that you can give men things that make and god says no the possibilities of the flesh in your life are too many to give you power unsupervised that is why he 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 connected the power to your yieldedness look up look at me please are we learning spiritual power is tied to the yieldedness of the individual the degree to which you are yielded is what is responsible for the increase of power because that means that you are ready to subscribe to authority and to work within jurisdiction so when two people come and stand here and manifest different possibilities it is not because it's a different god are we together it is a reflection our differences even in administering spiritual power is a product of our yieldedness yieldedness someone can pray for someone on a wheelchair and nothing happens and another person may not even pray and then he rises up from the wheelchair the difference is that degree of power that degree of presence which is a measure of the degree of yieldedness who is learning tonight hallelujah are you seeing that it is safe for many Christians to not have power? That God's refusing to give certain people power is an act of his mercy for your sake. Because the possibilities that are locked up within them, there will be a disaster to his program and even to your health if they have access to power without an understanding of authority. Today, America and Europe with all due respect are battling a violation of this principle giving people access to power whether as guns are we together whether as the right to execute their will without authority it will always produce disaster economically politically when you give people power and then do not give them authority I know someone who bought a car for uber bolt no bolt uber and then gave this guy to to help him after many months the person did not bring any money 
he will give a flimsy excuse the tire spoiled this one spoiled and the man decided to buy something i can't remember the name you put a tracker that's authority now it will force that driver to behave so the driver must be yielding returns not because he's a good man but now he has been forced by a system called a tracker are we together can i tell you you know how powerful you are in this kingdom to the degree to which you are constrained by authority you see independence in our world is proof of maturity the degree to which you do not need anybody however reverse is the case in the spirit that the ones who are powerful and mighty are the ones who are constrained by authority so the centurion said i am a man under authority and on account of that i have soldiers under me are we together i say to one go and he goeth to another come and he cometh and he said jesus speak the word only you need not come to my house because i know you're a man under authority i know the law of authority because you are you became a man jesus only manifested authority when he became a man i told you god does not have authority but when god became a man he had to submit to the authority system too that was why as a reward for his submission god highly exalted him are we together now and gave him a name that is above every other name and gave him and gave him and gave him and gave him because he submitted and gave him hallelujah is someone learning so when you stand before spirits and you say in jesus name i don't want to see you go while you are shouting they are just watching you do you know why they don't go i will tell you it's not just because you are more or less anointed no no i wish we had time i would have shown you how to use the authority i may not be able to cover that in this discussion maybe another time at least you know the jurisdiction now don't pray against the spirit of a man no you can ask god it is god who is called the father of spirits you know what that means he's the originator is the greek word pata the hebrew is abba the originator of all spirits that means it is within his power and with respect to him it is not illegal to manipulate any human spirit even if he's pharaoh he will make pharaoh to give his slaves gold the father of spirits for you now it is this understanding that constructs your prayer life because one of the ways we execute power in the kingdom is in prayer are we learning now one of the ways we execute power in the kingdom is in prayer help me appreciate pastor jerry Prayer is a platform that gives you the allowance to manifest spiritual power. Is someone learning? This is very, very powerful. So you don't, in prayer, it is this understanding that constructs your prayer life because there is something called praying amiss. What makes prayer powerful is the word compliancy of that prayer. What makes prayer, listen carefully, powerful is the word compliancy the degree to which that prayer aligns with the word of god because i told you god's power only follows what he says are we learning yeah so when you see prayer producing results it is because the word of god has been connected to that prayer and it will commit god's power to bring to pass but it's important to understand so we've been given power over elemental forces the sea the air the earth are we together now this is very powerful there are certain oh dear, there are certain dimensions of power that was given to all men not believers for instance a farmer does not need to be a christian to draw the power of god that is deposited in the earth I told you that there are three levels of God's power. 
the highest dimension of God's power is attracted through intimacy you must encounter him to have that dimension of power the second dimension of power is hidden in principles it is not relational it, it is a function of light are we together if you know it whether as a businessman whether as a politician you can build a great nation even though a godless nation like Babylon God respected the building of Babylon they used his very power to build something that was against his will and yet the nation of Israel as anointed as they were they could not build anything till David arrived you read the story they had encounters but they did not understand the power enshrined in principles and it was David that gave stability and establishment to God's people power over unclean spirits verify that a spirit is unclean before you rebuke it there are many many spirits that are clean a human spirit saved or unsaved cannot be called an unclean spirit because Jesus died for everyone and there is hope for he that is joined to the living that means a man who is Saul today can become Paul tomorrow so you still cannot rebuke the man even though he's unsaved you can only pray for his salvation unclean spirits are spirits that have been verified by God's verdict that there is no salvation for them it is for such that when you administer the power of God in the name in the name of Jesus they leave I give you power over unclean spirits are we following we'll find somewhere to wrap up now then you have power like I said over situations and circumstances and now it is I told you that everything that has to do with the administration of power please do not forget this is with respect to the will of God because if someone is saying rain stop and another person is saying Lord send rain I need to eat you see that there are two people who are in conflict so I am praying right now and say father please bring rain in Port Harcourt. this year I must eat my children will not die of hunger if another person is saying Lord let rain stay because I'm anointed as sincere as those things are the one that will be answered is not the one who prays more it is the one who partners with the will of God for that moment everything in the kingdom revolves within the sphere of the will of God if you remove the will of God out his power has no ministry the assignment of the power of God is to bring all things into his will are we together the moment you are outside of the will of God the power of God has no ministry it is the reason why the power follows the word because the word of God is the clearest revelation of his will so before I pray for the sick there must be an understanding I don't need to recite it to his hearing it's a consciousness what is the basis of that person getting healed is it consistent with the will of God that is how I know not by feelings I don't have to feel anointed this is an issue of integrity here so I know that it is God's desire for that man to be healed and now I can pray for that person believing that the power of God will follow his will can I tell you many believers have their lives in shambles because they do not respect the will of God so they cannot see the power of God they are fasting against the will of God they are praying against the will of God it's him Jesus said father let me show you Jesus the greatest manifesto of the power of God if it be thy will or he said take this cup off me he says nevertheless ah, because if I find myself in disalignment to your will I can no longer be called the word of God I hope he knew he was tempted in every way so he could have lost that status as the word of God he was not just called the word of God because he was a word incarnate it was because he ensured that his life was always in sync with the will of God now he had a chance to be thinking differently from what God wanted to do but he said nevertheless not my will but yours be done nevertheless in fact here's what he said my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and finish it can I tell you the greatest people who will manifest the power of God in this end time are those who will pay the price to know the will of God looking for power is useless until you understand the will of God 
because the assignment of the power of God is to bring all things into the will of God then to execute the will of God to make it happen hallelujah is it God's will for me to prosper I check from scripture if that is true then I know for a fact that there must be a dimension of his power allocated for bringing that will to pass it is now my assignment to find out I'm not in doubt it is no longer will God bless me it is finding out how every time listen oh dear do we have time I have to give us a Jerry room to come and preach but let me teach you something The moment the will of God is about to come to pass in your life, watch this. The power of God will also depend on the wisdom of God. If the wisdom of God is not revealed, the power of God cannot work accurately. Watch this. Please listen to me. It is the wisdom of God that guides the operation of the power of God to make it manifest profitably. The Bible says to the Greeks, Christ is revealed. Christ, the anointing, is revealed as the wisdom of God and the power of God. So when God wants to help a man to truly walk in power, even if you pray for power alone, it's two things that will arrive in your life. Power and wisdom. Wisdom is what gives value to the correct use of power. Are we together now? Because the dynamics of operating power is that until you have wisdom you cannot let me show you then we'll pray Ephesians chapter 2 please give us from verse 16 Paul is praying let's see the content of his prayer Ephesians chapter 1 in fact verse 16 1 chapter 1 please Ephesians 1 and verse 16 can you give it to us thank you he says I cease not he's praying now to give thanks for you making mention of you in my prayers what is the content of the prayer 17 help us media that the god of our lord jesus christ watch this the father of glory may give unto you what is the first thing that whole journey will end in power but he said he will give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him next verse please the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that ye may know what is the hope of his calling number one number two what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints shout verse three together please ready one to read and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe according to the working of his mighty power the Bible says, according as his divine power have given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, but the administration is through the knowledge. Hallelujah. Wisdom. The wisdom of God is very powerful. Many people have prayed for power, but they have not prayed for wisdom. So they have the power, but then they are not able to manifest power and authority because there is no wisdom do you know that even if Elijah Elisha prayed over the woman remember the woman in, in uh, second Kings now hallelujah the wife of the sons of the prophet do you know that even though he prayed for her if he had spoken prophetically over her and there was no wisdom she still would have remained in debt it was the prophetic word that made her to even go and find vessels to borrow in the first place if he did not prophesy nobody would give her any vessel it was not a product of her creativity and then she comes and he gives her a strategy that is wisdom now I've released power up for multiplication but the power depends on vessels capacity you see this is the reason why those who are not enlightened if you impart power over them they will look like they are fake because the use of the power is not with wisdom have you seen somebody with all due respect manifest power and somehow you, you are you are there is no wisdom gives beauty to the use of power are we together now yes it is the mistake if you study the history of the church in nigeria this was the mistake many fathers with all due respect to them some dead and have gone to be with the lord they prayed and they access power 
but many of them did not access wisdom through the word so they in administering power they brought many things that were prophetic experiences and made doctrine out of them because wisdom was not there to separate personalized dealings and things that were doctrines are we learning now so when you have the power of god and you have the wisdom of god you will manifest dominion and authority intelligently in a way and a manner that brings glory to the name of the lord let me do a recap and then we'll pray number one we define power as the capacity to influence outcomes we define power as the force that compels compliance number two we define authority as the right to represent the legitimacy to use power that if you do not have authority the use of your power is illegal as seen in the case of a military man and an armed robber an armed robber has power but he lacks authority why because there is no the institution that authorized him is not there cannot be identified and the jurisdiction for the use of his rifle is also not there i told you that authority is always jurisdictional and that jurisdiction is defined as a sphere the sphere where the use of power is allowed beyond which it becomes illegal i need to recap one last time on very strong points that I made for your understanding number one that man does not have absolute power no he cannot have absolute power because his power is derived are we together only God has absolute power and in fact I did say that he is the owner of all power that's what makes him omnipotent It's an attribute of God that he did not share with man I forgot to tell you that it's not everything in God's nature that he gave man. We are partakers of his divine nature, but not every aspect of his nature. There are dimensions of his nature he withdrew from man. That's what makes him God. His omnipresence, his omniscience, and his omnipotence. These are the three attributes of God that brands him in a class all by himself. Man did not receive that one. Are we together? This is very important. Then, remember, many of you were surprised when I made the statement that God does not have authority. God cannot have authority. The nature of authority, I remind you, is that an authority, a person higher than you, must confide upon you. No. God only manifested authority in Jesus, and that is because he became a man. So we see him submit to John submit to simeon the prophet anna the prophetess are we together now because he was a pattern man a model for the believer as to how he will be walking with in authority he even said my father is greater than i yet we understand the triune nature but god cannot have authority if god has authority he must be loyal to someone i also told you that god cannot obey it's not an ability that he has who will he obey no, obedience is not a quality that God possesses. He cannot obey. No. To obey means someone outside yourself must give you the instruction. And there is no man who can instruct him. God does not obey. And this is, I wish I had time. I would have taught you. I think it's a mistake that people have made in the body of Christ. They command God. And sometimes we say statements like we need to give God permission in the earth and I understand what sometimes preachers are trying to say but it's not exactly true no man gives God permission uh, what he does is partnership it's not permission if God does not seek your will and still does something he's still right because the earth is still is still his own are we together now yes he limited himself to allow man taste of the power of revealing his glory but when he walks with man it is not weakness it is allowing man to share in he, that glory are we together so he said if all men refuse to praise me i can ignore them and raise up stones and it is not illegal so if i want to pray for the sick now and god wants the sick to come and i don't pray and it looks like the sick are not healed it's not that God is limited, it's that he has bound himself to give man an opportunity to experience his glory also. But it is within his exclusive ability 
to do anything with or without the permission of man because he has power without authority the person who has power without authority also does not have jurisdiction for the use of that power because god is not defined by any jurisdiction to the point that Paul talks about the possibility of tasting of the power of the ages to come. Who owns that one? Are we together? God is not restricted by time, by dimensions. He can go into your yesterday, your tomorrow, and he can bless you and speak over your life. I told you that one of the reasons why we believe God is not just that he has integrity. It's because he's the only one who can speak like that. There is no other person higher than him to contend with him. So if you disbelieve God, it is proof that you suspect he's a liar. That somewhere there is someone higher than him and he's not telling you the truth. Hallelujah. We're going to pray. Many believers do not understand the jurisdiction of their power. So we pray and we say all kinds of things and they never get answered. There is intelligence to the use of power. I didn't have the time to teach you on how the believer executes power because there is a, we are given a code of conduct. Are we together? There are rules of engagement. For instance, when you see a herbalist, there is a way he's trained to use power. He can look at you and say, bring chicken, bring this, bring that. Now, the believer does not act like that. There is a way we release the power of God. And one of the platforms I told you earlier on is in prayer. Mark eleven twenty four. 24. What things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that thou receivest them, and thou shall have them. Number two is by the use of the name. We can spend all night talking about that. The use of the name of Jesus is not the recitation of the name. The power is not in the recitation. The recitation only makes creation know that he is the one we are talking about. The use of the name of Jesus is first a consciousness of his exalted position. Jesus never had to use his name to say in my name. He only said in my name when he was talking to the disciples. So you can say in Jesus name and you did not use the name of Jesus. It is not the recitation. No. Otherwise, the name will be a journey, some charm somewhere. It is a consciousness. A consciousness. The name is a capture of the office that has been given to him now. Are we together? When you say Jesus, his name was not even Jesus. I hope you know that. Yes. So when you say Jesus, demons do not, I mean, the J-E-S-U-S you are talking about, it did not exist many years ago in that form if you go to israel and say jesus they will correct you because the number one they will say your pronunciation is wrong and now begin to argue about the person you are talking about there are footballers that carry this name you call their name and see whether demons will go so it's not i'm not saying don't use jesus i hope you get what i'm saying when we say jesus we are letting creation know that the force behind the results is the one exalted as lord and christ but the name jesus is not a person's name the owner of that name today has an office it is that office that the power comes from because demons can call jesus too but they do not understand the power of the office the bible says and every knee will bow of things in earth under the earth and confess that jesus has now become lord that is the name the name is his lordship it's an office of dominion the earth is the why do you call me lord lord the moment you come to a revelation of his lordship you have found the key to the name it's not the pronunciation of his earth work the name jesus was a name that was given to him he would have been anybody joshua you would have been ebenezer you would have been anything at all are we together so when demons see you and you say in jesus name they look behind the speakings because the damsel said these are men who came to she was saying everything right but it was by a familiar spirit so when we say in jesus name we are saying that name so that for us and those who hear us we know that the the one whose office we are invoking is the one they know as jesus but it is a consciousness 
and when demons know you carry that consciousness of being exalted number one your oneness with christ number two your positional advantage not just that he's great but that you are exalted with him now then your shadows can heal the shadows do not call the name of jesus but the authority that is behind that name we have to stop rise up on your feet can we pray for a minute or two go ahead lift your voice and pray the believer given authority in Christ capacity to exact dominion upon creation go ahead and pray declare it upon your life I have authority I have power I understand the jurisdiction of my authority I understand the use of the power that the assignment of power is to birth the will and the purposes of God someone is praying are you praying for the next one minute what manner of man is this that even the winds and the waves obey him what manner of man is this i have power and i have authority the legitimacy to use that power over creation against unclean spirits over situations and circumstances hallelujah one more prayer point and then i just speak over you and we are done remember now you have power and you have authority there is no fear to the one who has authority because the institution that conferred it upon you defends you and if need be they validate that you are not using it illegitimately are we together now yes it is god that gave you power and he gave you authority and jurisdiction so when you speak over your life and creation and they refuse to obey it is not your business again the one who conferred the authority upon you for his name's sake they hurt his integrity when they disobey you and he is forced to now use his absolute power without authority and force creation to hear you are you ready to speak over your destiny now now you know that you can speak and pray without fear why because you have power and you have authority and remember the modus operandi is that all your speakings must be consistent with the will of God what is the will of God his thoughts revealed in what he said Genesis 21 1 the Lord visited Sarah as he has said he did unto Sarah as he has spoken so everything you know that God has said concerning you I call them exceeding great and precious promises the Bible says that by them we might be the partakers of his divine nature haven't escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust in one minute walking on borrowed time go ahead and declare over your destiny do not be silent inside outside online go ahead and begin to pray declare the lord is my light and my salvation of whom shall i be afraid of the lord is the strength of my life in the name of jesus the head and not the tail exalted above the nations of the earth someone is making declarations remember you have authority remember you have power remember you are praying within the jurisdiction of your authority you are praying consistent with the will of god there is a government above you that insists that creation circumstances your destiny becomes obedient take a minute to pray the favor of god working in my life doors are opening by the spirit no weapon fashioned against me shall prosper and every tongue that rises up against me falls in judgment in the name of jesus i go forward i work strong 
by the spirit of the living God. His wisdom is at work in my life. His power is at work in my life. Is someone declaring in one minute? The year ends in victory for me. Thanks be to God, which causes me to triumph always. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even my faith. In the name of Jesus Christ, creation aligns itself to work out the purposes of God in my life. Man, walk in partnership with the Spirit of grace, working out the purposes of God in my life. In the name of Jesus, everything I touch is blessed, blessed by the Spirit of God. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. In Jesus' name, we pray. Pastor Jerry, let me borrow one minute from your time and just make an altar call. Um, I believe that until men encounter Jesus in truth, there is no possibility for walking in true power. It is impossible that in a crowd of thousands of people here, inside, outside, following online, there will always, because the Bible says, the Lord added daily not just as many as should be transformed they first have to be saved because his desire is first that all men be saved then that they come into the knowledge of the truth i believe that there's someone here you came to church tonight you are inside here you're outside and you're saying apostle on hearing you speak i am that one person who has only used his power invested in principles without a relationship with the son of the living god he came to Nicodemus and he said in John 3 and verse 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have life everlasting. 17 says, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Here is your chance tonight. Remember, at the detriment of your eternal salvation, your, eternal, your eternity, God allows you to choose. Two groups in one the first is someone who is saying i have never truly consciously made jesus lord of my life number two the second is saying apostle i love jesus and but here and there my life has gone haywire and i need to rededicate my life i'm only looking for one sincere person who would not lie to himself or herself i don't need everybody one sincere person i begin to count one to five all of the overflows you may do well to just move to your screens and those who are in here may i request with gallancy and honor make your way to the front i begin to count one let's celebrate them as they come two thank you thank you for your courage win that war tonight once and for all come to jesus the bible declares as many who will come to him he will in no wise cast away come three if you're coming i want you to run come there's no shame there's no fear you are coming to your savior the custodian and the owner of all power the power that can change your life he is able to by his power save even to the uttermost four the last count and i begin to pray hallelujah amen i will just pray and then i'll take my seat when pastor jerry comes and takes his session he will make prophetic declarations i believe over your destiny and you receive with all your heart and let that open you up to new chapters because one of the ways that we receive the power of god is through prophetic declarations there are times that you are spoken upon hallelujah for all of you who are in front here thank you very much for making this bold and noble decision those who are following either by television or watching online thank you for joining here's your chance to make jesus lord of your life lift your right hand if you read your word i believe that you are the son of god i believe that you died for my sin I believe that you rose again for my justification right now I receive you into my heart as my Savior my Lord 
and my king i declare that the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight until forever i'm a child of god the righteousness of god in christ keep your hands lifted father thank you for these precious ones and i stand tonight under the corporate anointing here to make declarations that your sins are truly forgiven by the integrity of scripture in the name of jesus i call you the righteousness of god in christ and i commend you to the word of his grace and to the ministry of the holy spirit that you'll be built you'll be established in righteousness you will love jesus all the days of your life and you will live for him forever in jesus name any instructions on what to do with them okay beautiful so here's what i want you to do all of you um there's a gentleman and a lady i see waving their hands may i please request that you move to my right that will be your left and they'll have a word with you very quickly and then you return to join the next session let's give them a big god bless you hallelujah praise the name of the lord pastor larry thank you so very much house on the rock thank you so much i love you may god bless you in jesus name Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. Saints, hast thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad. Keep sharing on Facebook. Keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you.